everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've aspired to do educational videos ever, so, ever since I started YouTube. I've always thought to myself that's the niche that I want to be put into. And then, you know, I started my PhD vlogs and I started doing this and that. And I just got a bit carried away and I feel like I want to go back to the basics. Back to the things that you guys ask me the most. How to revise, how to study, how to make notes, you know, how to apply for things, how to write a CV and things like that. Things that I think, I feel like I've got a lot of experience in. Before I go into that, can I just tell you guys that the final edit of my um, PhD thesis has been submitted and that's it. I'm officially done with the PhD. So the first copy that I submitted was the um, pre examination copy so you submit that and then you have an oral examination whereby the examiner goes through your thesis and writes lots of notes and then they give you either minor corrections or major corrections i had some minor i had really minor corrections luckily um they give you corrections and then you correct them and then you reprint it and you hand it in to the student center and that is the one that copy will be left in the library of your university and will be publicly available so my copy should be in the university from, I believe, next month or so. And yeah, so I got an email just literally like half an hour ago saying, Dear Dr. Yonis, <laughs> I digress. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd update you guys on that, seeing as I, I literally just got the email now. Today, the video I wanted to talk about today is how to revise successfully. And I say successfully because I mean successfully. You could be seated all day and still fail your exams the major part of success is what you do at home when you're revising independently in the library or at home or with friends i think the one kind of pitfall that students always um, get themselves into is spending lots of time revising and not really knowing what the pur their purpose is or their aim for that day and then they come out of the day and they haven't really achieved anything no more wiser when it comes to exams than they were before that day. I have a few tips, I have about, about five, six tips that I wanted to share with you that really worked for me all the way from GCSE to A-levels, to university, to my masters, and even to my PhD when I was rising for my old examination. These tips really, really helped. And I feel like that's my forte, um, education and just studying and revising and techniques because I've tried all of them, I've tried them all. I know what works, I know what doesn't work, even though it's not it's not a one size fits all, but on the whole I think generally when it comes to revision there are, there, it, there are ways that do work and there are ways that just do not work. If you want to hear my top tips then do keep on watching. So tip number one is to always have somewhere where you record what you want to do for the day so for me, I have this diary and I got it from Typo and it was only a couple of pounds, I got it from Cambridge. Writing down what you want to do for the day and having a to-do list really, really, really makes a difference. I even write down things like buy curtains or I don't know, call this person, do that because I find that it really helps to have my list out of my head on, on paper. So when it comes to revising, I have more space in my head to revise, if that makes sense. Be to have a to-do list somewhere that you write down what you want to do every single day and to stick to it. And when you tick it off, there's, I think there's, there are some studies that have been done about this, like to-do lists and the satisfaction that a person feels when they've ticked off something that they wanted to do in that day. It's just that, that, that sort of um, gratification, self-gratification that you feel like you've achieved something. My tip number two Never spend more than one hour revising any one topic. That is my biggest tip. I think, again, people always feel like the more time they spend on something, the better they're going to be or the more proficient they're going to be. That's not the case at all. In fact, it's quite the contrary. The more time you spend on something, the less you take in, just because it's just, over, it's just overloaded. You're just exhausting your mind. I've broken down my subjects into sort of small bite-sized topics and that's the case with anything like I said anything from high school to even university split your modules up into sections stick to revising one section in one day don't try to revise a whole module in a day it's just it's so unrealistic and you will only disappoint yourself at the end of it when you don't remember anything and then spend the next hour revising something completely different I would recommend spending three hours revising three totally different subjects or, t or topics or modules as opposed to trying to cram in three hours of one topic because tomorrow, I can guarantee you, 
you will not remember everything you've learned and you will feel like you failed and that will dent your own self-esteem. Just be very targeted and individualistic when it comes to what you want to revise and study even. Tip number three is to use flashcards. So I don't really, I don't have any here with me, um, but you can make them yourself, you don't have to buy them either. So they're small, small kind of cards, like postcard sized um, coloured card that have lines or they're just white. Use that to write your notes, especially now that you've got a few months left to the exams. Use that as your study time to, to write your notes because what a lot of research has shown that when you write something down, you reinforce it in your mind. It kind of makes a memory in your mind. Your mind is very plastic. So by writing something down, you've taught your hand how to write. It's really important, especially when it comes to the exam where you're going to have to write these things down. To have written it down already gives yourself that extra advantage. There were so many times in exams where there was a question and I, I just had this kind of moment where I thought, I've written this down before, and, and, it, just, and it just naturally flows. But the second the good thing is that you can use those cards to revise on the bus, on the tube, on the train, in the car. Um, if you get a quick five minutes where you're at the bus stop and you're waiting for a bus, just pick out your cards and start reading them. That, that's one or two things that you would learn. I have a kind of photographical memory, not completely, but kind of. So I used to look at those cards so much that when I came to the exam, I could literally I could see those cards in my head and I could just read them as if I'm reading the textbook <laughs> which sounds like cheating doesn't it but <laughs> you're allowed I think that's really helpful having condensed notes on uh, on a card and using that to revise so number four and five kind of relates but you know they're kind of different ends of the spectrum number four is to focus on the difficult challenging topics and tip number five is to focus on the easy like things that you just know topics. Focusing on the difficult topics, focusing on the things that you hate, you find challenging, is the, the thing that's going to be most beneficial for you. What happens when you get a 10 mark question asking you about a topic that you hate? What happens then? Then you've lost all the marks, you know? Who, you've lost everything. That could be 10% of the paper. And that's the difference between two different grades, right? pass or fail even. At least you know that you know the basic fundamentals, you're able to answer a basic question, you can describe the basic keywords if necessary, you can write something about it, so even if there was a 10 mark question, you can get two, three, four, five, right? It's better than nothing. And the other side, where I said to strongly um, focus on the easy questions, you might ask, why? Why would I do that? I know the answers. Well, those are the, usually the questions that people lose out marks on because they just haven't solidified it in it. They know it. If I ask you an easy question, you could definitely tell me the answer, but you haven't solidified getting the full marks. Half or, or even more than that, sometimes 60-70% of the answers are basic fundamental uh, questions. If in the first half you feel so secure then you're going to feel like you've done well, right? And so your morale and your confidence will be boosted. And naturally, in the second half, you're going to feel like you can, you can do better. My sixth tip is to read the mark scheme of the exams. I mean, as you're revising, make sure that you know that you're revising what you actually need to know. Every minute is so precious. Every second is invaluable. In university, this translates to look at exemplar questions. Um, and example answers that usually universities should have at least one or two sort of example answers for questions that have um, come up in the past. The key is to know what the examiner wants. Let's say, for example, we're, we're looking at the topic of, I don't know, ecology and science. And if a question comes up asking, uh, let's say there was a, a food chain, and a question comes up asking why, and there's a graph, okay, there's a food chain and there's a graph, and it shows you the population of foxes and rabbits, for example. And the question asks you to describe the change in population of foxes over time. Now, the correct answer would be, oh, the number of foxes has decreased over time because the number of rabbits has decreased over time and that's their prey and they don't have any predators, whatever. But is that going to give you your full marks? Do you know that? Are you, are you confident in saying that that's going to give you your full marks? Because you've studied that topic and that is the correct answer. But is that going to give you your five marks? No, it's not. What the examiner wants, the examiner wants to know what the population was in the beginning of that graph. 
So the population was 1 billion rabbits. It then wants to, it, that's one mark. It then wants you to say there was a rapid increase or there was a rapid decrease. That's two marks. It then wants you to say what you said, which is um, their population has changed. That's great. That's three marks now. It then wants you to say why. So if it says describe and explain or whatever the question says, then you have to explain what predators are, what the prey is, and um, how this links in, how rabbits and uh, how rabbits and foxes are related in the food chain, and why their relationship is correlated. Now, you've, you've now got your five marks, but had you just looked at the question and not known what the examiner wants, you only would have gained two marks maximum. So it's really important to look at the mark scheme to know what it is that the examiner actually wants from you. My last tip is to always have something hydrating next to you. So I've got um, just hot water, my UCL coffee mug, um, but I only use water, I only put hot water in it. And so yeah, I, I drink hot water and it just keeps me hydrated when I'm studying, when I'm sitting down. You know, when you're revising, you're using so much brain power that it's, it's important to rejuvenate your mind. Have slow release energy like bananas, um, almonds. The last, last thing that I want to say is get rid of this. <laughs> Guys, get rid of your phones. Do not revise your phones in front of you. You've associated sitting at a desk with revising. Don't pick up your phone. Associate your phone with a different area of your of your room. Don't associate it with sitting down. Get rid of any distractions around you. Put your laptop on flight mode if you have Wi-Fi and you, you know get messages there. Or the other thing that you could do actually is, and I think I did this at one point but it didn't really work for me, is on, so if you have a Mac, for example, make a new user that is not connected to your Wi-Fi and has all, you know, has Word, has what you need, but it's not connected to Wi-Fi. So you don't need to, you can, you know, write your essays using papers that you've downloaded already or whatever, um, but you're not connected to the internet. Uh, I've talked a lot. I need some water. Yeah. At the end of the video, let me know which tip you think is most useful. Try to implement all of them. I don't think you need to pick or choose. Try to put all of them into your routine. Make sure you subscribe to me if you haven't subscribed to me already. Hit 8k, woo! I think I'm quite happy with that, considering I barely post. I know it's like nothing compared to people on YouTube, but you shouldn't compare yourself to people. I hope they have a great day and a great week, whatever that you're doing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!